There's something that I always miss in modern society, which is like the anticipation of anything. So when you're a kid, you used to anticipate like films coming out. You used to go to the, the video shop and you'd be like, yeah, it's not going to be on TV. You've got to like rent it. You've got to look forward to renting it. And like for me, craft beer is almost like that. I'll order it, but then I'm looking forward to it coming in and trying it. And I'm looking forward to trying it with people. And I'm looking forward to so-and-so coming in so he can try it. And like watching people on a Friday night drink what's going to go on a tap. So it's that, that anticipation. Hello and welcome to We Are Beer People, a podcast all about the many different people who help us enjoy beer. I'm your host, Rob Cadwell, and I reckon if you're listening to this, then there's a good chance that you are one of the beer people too. You might be involved in the world of beer, you may want to find out more about the industry, or perhaps you simply enjoy drinking the stuff. So join me now as I have a chat with one of the beer people. The sound around us is the purring of coffee machines steaming milk, the tinging of teaspoons, and the punctuated bubble of people chatting. Today, we're at the Hive in Crowthorne in Berkshire, a craft beer coffee shop that's just over the road from Crowthorne Railway Station. It was set up by husband and wife team Alex and Emma Rowley, who opened the doors in December 2020, just in time for the introduction of some punchy COVID-tiered lockdowns. But in the three years they've been open, they've created a pet-friendly space built around beer, coffee and cheese, has been a magnet for a whole host of vibrant communities. It's a central hub for families, friends, runners, walkers and cyclists to mix together. And it doesn't matter whether you're into beer, coffee or cheese, but it certainly helps. The common theme here is that it's a welcome place for all that supports independent suppliers locally and nationally. And it's a springboard for discovering new beers, cheese, coffee, passions, interests and people. And today we're chatting with Alex Rowley. So grab yourself a beverage as we head into the hive and have a chat with one of the beer people. Hello, Alex, and thank you very much for coming onto the podcast today. No worries. Thank you very much. And thank you for having us in at the Hive. So we're in the snug at the moment. Yeah, we've turfed everyone out. so it's, We uh, have done, so we're very yeah. grateful to everyone for, for letting us do that. But it's been really nice to come in out of the cold. Yeah, it's, uh, it's taken a turn, isn't it? It has indeed, yeah. I think I feel like winter's here now, and uh, it's been very mild up until this point. Yeah, December's here. Yeah. <laughs> he says in January. Yeah. And it's all right. But yeah, so I just want to say thank you very much for coming on. I wonder if you could start by just telling listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do. Uh, yeah, so I'm Alex, and my wife Emma and I started the high just over three years ago. Um, we still don't know what to call it, a hybrid <laughs> coffee shop craft beer bottle shop tap room and we just really started it on a whim of a list of everything we liked and yearned for in this area that we could walk to and yeah just kind of went from there really so what were the items that were in your bucket list then that you're wanting to bring into your shop yeah i think with probably with any craft beer fan the, the dream is to have somewhere you can walk to that serves the drinks you like whereas the sort of pubs around our area do not facilitate that whatsoever so that was top of the list of good beer and then obviously if you're a coffee addict great coffee cheese obviously is up there and biltong and dogs uh so it's put them all together and you kind of you can pick the best bits out of all the independence you've ever been to uh and yeah just become a bit of a community hub for like-minded people really fantastic it definitely feels like that. So um, I come in today and you've got a few dogs in. You've got grandparents with their children. You've got people <laughs> coming in, having a beer after work. Um, a real mix of things. And I know you do different events as well. So you do like running, there's games nights, quizzes and all that kind of thing. So it does feel like there's a, a reason for lots of people to be here. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, there's people in today that will be drinking coffee and sitting down seeing family or yeah, walking their dog. And then we'll see them later in the week for a beer or, uh, yeah, a few beers with friends and stuff. So it's a nice kind of crossover from day to night and just throughout the week people come for different reasons. And, yeah, it's nice. It's a nice feel. 
Do you feel like you've sort of created the place that you'd want to come to? A hundred percent in in my mind, yes. Purely because I still come here on my days off. So it's <laughs> a great sign. Yeah, yeah, that's a good sign, I guess. Yeah. And so, as you said, the Hive celebrated its third birthday last month. Congratulations. Indeed, on touch wood. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely amazing achievement. And I'm surprised that three years has gone by that quickly. But I also remember that photo you shared where this was just a shell of a unit. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But I guess, yeah, what, what drew you and your partner, Emma, to starting out on that journey um, to getting here, to transforming that and getting to where we are today? I guess really all the, the nuggets kind of started when we were drinking in tap rooms around the country and, well, more locally, I guess. And there's only so long you can kind of spend in a, an industrial car park before one of the group says, OK, I'm going. And if they're not into craft beer, they're not going anyway. It's a bit trickier to sort of get a group of people together if a couple of them don't like craft beer, so they're not going to go to a tap room in, you know, an industrial estate willingly. So I think that was always a nugget of, all right, okay, there needs to be another way, another place that this can this can happen. And then we went to my beloved Dexter and Jones <laughs> up in Nutsford before it was taken over, actually. Um, and I think that seeing that bottle shop kind of layout that they've got... Um, if you haven't been, it's a great place, by the way. It's awesome. I've had that to my list. I've not yeah. been there. No. Amazing pilgrimage so nuts, up to there. So Nutsford up in Cheshire? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just off the M6. Amazing, amazing bottle shop. And uh, yeah, we've now like been up there a few times since we've opened. But yeah, seeing that, it was kind of, then we walked back to my brother-in-law's house and I was just silent for about an hour. You were ruminating. It was, yeah, that little nugget was kind of, was pulling in. Because I think my first idea was to... Uh, buy an ice cream van and recondition it into a, a bar so you'd be pulling pints instead of Mr. Whippies. Then I realised that was a terrible idea of licensing laws. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, right, okay, fixed premises. I could see it being very popular, though, once you heard that sound in the neighbourhood. Yeah. All, yeah. The, all the uh, people come out. Yeah, well, I had a, yeah. play, I had a, had a good playlist. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was kind of the, the start of it, really. And then it was just writing that list of, like, this is what we'd want. And then trying to get the aesthetic up in my head of how it would look yeah and then it was just really trying to find quirky properties yeah I guess that was probably one of the, the integral parts of it is finding a place and that could be home for this how did that go about how did you set about finding the place and how did you know it when you'd found this place uh, well luckily I, I had a I had a tip off <laughs> which is always always good to have so someone in the village knew I wanted to start this because I in my previous job I had my own garden kind of design company mm -hmm. where I actually did her garden and I was like I'm really going to start a bar and blah 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 chatted to everyone that I could <laughs> customers <laughs> so they all kind of knew what I was doing and yeah she tipped me off to this place so oh, wow. Uh, wow yeah we kind of had tapped it up before it was on the market and uh, yeah it was quirky enough that I could see yeah there was a there was a, a little vision we had when we walked in, so that was good. Yeah, that's really good. It's funny how that all came out of that, I don't know, just a conversation with a, a customer at the time, like the, an off-chance kind of recommendation that then led to this. Yeah, yeah. I like to, yeah, you like to think it's kind of like, you know, not superstitious, but it's, you know, kind of, it, it, they all link together of like, some of our customers I know from jobs I've done, and I remember they, I saw a growler in their kitchen, and I was like, oh, I saw a siren growler, oh, brilliant, da, da, da. that conversation started, and then they of now coming to me and it's like yeah it's sort of paying itself forward it's really good and how did the name The Hive come out? I wish I could remember <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we were I can't actually remember any of the other names we came up with but they nothing kind of felt right nothing worked they all felt a bit forced of like you know the craft this the craft that or beer this or beer that or coffee beer beer cough cough coffee cough, beer beer refi no, no, terrible terrible, terrible. <laughs> we just stuck in there and then yeah then i think we were yeah. I've over, probably over way too many drinks we were just talking about right what is it we're doing here and it was like you want people to come in people to enjoy stuff together and it was like yeah a bit like a hive yeah like a hive we're making a hive let's call it hive nice so, yeah that stuck that's really cool and um so now you've sort of created a place, you have, is it six taps on, generally rotating? Yeah, six around. taps, um, always changing. So we generally only have one keg and then change it over, so just to confuse everyone. But that's always part of the charm, isn't it? So you can try something else when you come in and explore what's available. Yeah, we want people to come in and be like, oh, I had this last time, which I really liked. What's similar or what's mm -hmm. new or what should I try next? So 
Yeah, it's good to keep it keep it constantly rotating. Yeah. You mentioned prior to this that you were doing garden design and, and landscaping and, and that kind of thing. Um, how did those roles sort of help you in the role here when you were setting up the hive? Uh, yeah, I get. I think I started uh, probably a few years, about five years ago, say. Mm. Well, probably five years before starting the hive. And um, yeah, just started off doing gardens, doing landscaping, and worked with the garden designer. Started doing that kind of stuff. So that design element, which was always in my head, kind of could come out a bit more. Mm. And then by the end of it, I was almost designing outbuildings and outside bars and like the day before we got the key to this place I literally just finished building a bar in Marlow for a customer mm -hmm. who's now obviously been in a, a fair few times so it was quite a nice transition of being able to build stuff knowing that I was going to actually build a proper bar as yeah. well so it was yeah it was a, a, a nice little synergy into uh, building this really but yeah I've always been quite eager to build anything so I generally build all the furniture and everything in this place so that's got to have helped as well especially when you're starting out and uh, I guess every pound counts doesn't it at that point oh god yeah with me and my brother building everything not so much pounds as yeah <laughs> tens of noughts on yeah. the end. so yeah I mean that's one anything of you can do yourself is gonna yeah one of the scary things we thankfully we never had to budget for it but getting an outside company to come in and rebuild your entire sort of bar, your bar or new business mm -hmm. yeah, that's a scary cost that thankfully we didn't have to didn't have to pay out yeah um, and on the flip side, were there any sort of skills that you felt you needed to kind of brush up on that when as you're going into the hive, or did, oh, all have of you them. been kind of learning as you as you went along? Oh god, yeah, I knew nothing. Yeah, I'd, I'd never uh, pulled a pint <laughs> or made a coffee. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, pretty much everything. How did you go about um, learning those sorts of skills? Uh, <laughs> thankfully, I know an independent bar in Camberley, and the guys from there. He actually gave me his business plan to base ours on, mm -hmm. um, which is really helpful. So when I was chatting to him, I just literally pulled a few beers. That kind of got that in my head. That was like the week before. And then the coffee side, which was much more because, you know, that's got to look pretty. Mine still don't look pretty. But um, our coffee supplies in Reading, opposite Double Barreled. Oh, yeah. yeah. So happy days. I can yeah. go and train making coffee there and then go and have a few beers with... Mike so, and Lucy yeah. and yeah two birds with one stone uh, on that visit yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that's work yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure there's no typical day of the week uh, for you but could you describe what one might look like for you yeah I guess uh, well, a typical day for us I guess is that we're normally open at say nine o'clock in the morning until half nine ten o'clock at night so it's a full-on kind of active day of everyone coming in different times completely different people during the day so yeah generally we're in quite early have a little morning coffee rush in and then if it's later on in the week a wealth of beer will turn up which needs to be sorted and mm -hmm. priced and put out and added on the system whilst obviously we're then going through like a a busy lunch period and then that'll normally have a little bit of a breather and then uh gradually and gradually it'll get more and more beery which is lovely. Like a dial is just being turned as you go through Yeah, the day. yeah, you yeah. can sort of slowly see a few more smiles and uh, everyone gets a little bit louder and uh, people yeah. are talking to each other more. Yeah, it's brilliant. Just looking into that a little bit more, what does your role actually involve then? Uh, I guess putting on lots of different hats throughout the day. <laughs> <laughs> so at any point of the day, I can be in, uh, be in dishwash, be, be chatting beer with people, be, you know, speaking on the phone to brewery suppliers we obviously get quite a few brewers in mm -hmm. so we can speak to them quite a lot which is amazing still quite surreal actually uh, and yeah really just kind of chatting with all the customers really and it's like the weird and wonderful conversations we have with everyone and people are obviously very supportive of what we do and how we got here so we kind of and everyone's fully on board with what we're trying to do with especially with the beer we've kind of turned so many people into craft beer that didn't know anything about it that are now you know as soon as they walk in the door I know exactly what new beer has come in that they'll like and it's like right yeah you need to drink that and that and like you already like this it's still quite amusing how many people think that the because we've got about say 300 350 beers mm. how many people think they're soft drinks <laughs> they come in you like, these are different soft drinks you're like no 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 <laughs> much much more interesting yeah. than that <laughs> and that's the joy of the can design isn't it where they just look make them look so vibrant yeah so someone comes in just has a coffee and they're kind of drawn if they go to the toilet or they're yeah. going up to the beer den then they're 
you sort of slowly see them like stopping and going, asking questions like, what actually is all of this stuff? Yeah. Then obviously we can give them tasters from the tap and yeah, find That's out really good. Find out who they are, if they're a sour person or they're a stouty. Or yeah, they might not know yet. <laughs> no, exactly. exactly. Um, it's always interesting and to be honest, can't really help yourself sometimes when you read a, a beer description and it does sound like a soft drink, doesn't it? Or some sort of vanilla kind of yeah. pastry <laughs> something. You're like, oh, this must be all right. And if you don't know about craft beer, then um, why wouldn't it be? Yeah, I mean, quite some of the sours in the moment, especially in this season, they're almost <laughs> like ingredients for a crumble or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they've yeah. gone fully into it. And how do you how do you divide your time uh, between yourself and, and Emma? Do you have kind of set roles that you look after? I'm definitely beer ordering and displaying of beer, which happily ticks my OCD. <laughs> so the bottle shop is my is my child <laughs> that I look after. M thankfully looks after a lot of the staffing HR much more diplomatic than myself and yeah I'm generally here quite a lot just chatting and jumping in where needed Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah so I'm kind of more hands on I guess and yeah M's much more hands on with with our two little girls which is greatly appreciated thankfully so I think it needs both of you doesn't it to have those different things that you bring to the business and to do it together and you mentioned before like the opening hours as well making sure that they work with family life yeah so we've literally we've just kind of um, changed that up so we've we're now shut on a Sunday mm. just so we've got like a day with with our two with our two kids and then opening Monday to Saturday so that'll be a good thing I think it'll just refresh the fact that we're not so stressed yeah totally <laughs> we have a bit. I think it's the sort of change that makes it sustainable that we've done three years and you can do many, yeah, many more I think, yeah you've got to like you know you've got to pick where a potential stress point is and I think the fact that we could I could be called in at any point at any day yeah that's kind of yeah that has a an end I guess so that's kind of yeah that would chill us out a bit yeah definitely and um what's your favorite thing about your role I, I honestly don't know probably I don't know just like a like a child like reliving <laughs> my my youth almost of just I was actually I actually wrote something down when I was like thinking of when we'd be chatting and I was mm. like there's, there's something that I always miss in modern society which is like the anticipation of anything so when you're a kid you used to anticipate like films coming out you used to go to the, go to the video shop and you'd be like yeah it's not going to be on TV you've got to like rent it you've got to mm. look forward to renting it and like for me craft beer is almost like that I'll order it but then I'm looking forward to it coming in and trying it and I'm looking forward to trying it with people and I'm looking forward to so and so coming in so he can try it and like watching people on a Friday night drink what's going to go on a tap so it's that that anticipation is I think my it's a weird answer no I, <laughs> I, like, I, t- I totally get that it's yeah the, um, it's that, that that kind of little joyous thing of like I know somebody's really going to like this yeah and almost liking that journey from ordering it to seeing it out there to seeing people drink it I guess yeah it's that um, as you say in society at the moment everything's instant gratification isn't it yeah just it's like, oh, if you want oh, to watch a film you just click it click on it and it plays and all that you've not yeah, really got to any, wait anything is like you know you can Amazon something it'll be it's it's here. there the same day and you're like exactly yeah but I think the thing you mentioned about um, that anticipation of bringing joy to others that's something um, JD who I spoke with mentioned the same thing so when he was working in the cellar Yes, uh, he came <laughs> yeah, across definitely. a good beer going, oh, that's nice. I cannot wait to like uh, try, you know, get that pouring upstairs and seeing what people's reactions are going to be or recommending that to someone because I know they're going to like it. It sounds like a similar thing. Yeah, it's so good. It's like, it's like customers I know who like their favourite hops are. Mm. And when, you sit, when I see that, like, you know, someone's releasing something that's dry up to this, I'm like, oh, he, he's definitely going to like that. And I love it. Definitely like that. And then it's from that moment, I've got that in the back of my mind. So as soon as it comes in and they've got it, I'm like, right, cool, that's that's good. I know they'll be happy. You know someone's gone far down the rabbit hole of craft beer when they have a favourite hop, don't you? <laughs> that's, they're in deep at that point. Yeah. Or well, they just have, they have hops they definitely don't like and hops they definitely do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I never thought I'd be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. What is your favourite hop? Ooh, I think it's Rawaka mm. at the moment. I don't think I've had that or no, oh no my lord what, what are we talking about um, Polly's part of their hop studio range did a single hop rawaka mm. and it was chewy beyond belief Ooh. it was ludicrous so big and I I gave it to uh, John at Disruption Andy at Elusive a few other people just anyone that's delivering me beer basically yeah, have one of these I, see it, I was like you need to drink this like take this drink it 
and like a day later I'd get a text message from them like oh my god that's amazing that's yeah lot. and then track did a, a single hot version as well which was mm. just oh I have to try so that good. do you have any left in stock <laughs> no I think I drunk most of it and annoyingly if something comes in and it's really good yeah I'll obviously I'll sell it to everyone else yeah so what's good I'm like that's this good. is amazing yeah, yeah. you want that, to that will, change, that will change your life drink that yeah <laughs> that's right I'll keep, I'll keep an eye out for that like Nelson is you know yeah. my, my consistent love but I think at the moment yeah sweet spots for a whacker of, I'll have to keep an eye out for that can I change your mind actually it's Nelson it's always it. that's, uh, <laughs> that sort of white winey kind of things isn't it yeah I'm, I mean I'm, I'm quite a freak I still get like a nutty taste out of Nelson, some Nelson hot beers it's, mm. yeah oh I love it how would you say your role has evolved over time well I I'd like to think I know a little bit of what I'm doing now. <laughs> Whereas we first opened, yeah, me and me and Em had absolutely no no idea. I think we planned to be selling about forty beers and making about seventy five coffees in a week. I think we did that in a day. Wow! Yeah, we massively massively underestimated um, the fact that people were actually come to us <laughs> um, so yeah that was a massive learning curve straight away of like oh okay people are yeah. actually going to come and yeah we're actually going to be quite busy and the bottle shop got because we opened in December so the first few weeks mm. was Christmas week after you know, three weeks and yeah the, bo- the bottle shop got absolutely hammered just came in and I was like okay we really haven't, haven't got many beers left at all so now it's just because we are turning over so much and it is busy I, now I'm free to order within reason pretty much anything mm. I think will will go well and our customers will like so yeah that's I guess how it's progressive like I, that anticipation of knowing what our you know some styles just don't really sell as well I think or like here for some reason what's really popular around here and what's I think, well what's definitely more traditional mm. you know beers don't don't really sell it because we're, we are so kind of small batch mm. craft hop forward but yeah like any like New England's West Coast is absolutely fly obviously our stouts will, will sell anyone yeah. that loves stouts will, will come and just be like they'll, 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 stout. they'll yeah. smell the stouts yeah. actually, before they see it <laughs> they'll be there um, but I think sours really surprised me more than anything unbelievable like I guess it's a style probably three years ago it was still was obviously there and prevalent but just having people try it, I think, on the taps, because you always try and have a sour on, it's just now I think that the drinking bottles in the shop is, itself, they just fly out and mm. everyone tries all different weird and wonderful things. And they're so probably the best sort of style of beer to try together with like, different people, just because mm. they're so diverse and, well, frankly, insane some of them, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just, that's it, isn't it? It's just the range you get, obviously, within beer as, as a whole, but within sours. You can have something that's like one of those sweet packets, the dip dab thing. Yeah, kind of thing. Oh, it was, and beyond, can't you? Well, one of our um, staff, he's, he no longer works for us, but he helped design the um, the hive branding. Frankie, mm. he had his wedding reception here. It's when he got married, and um, he lives in Reading, well, Woodley. And he was, I really want a sour. Like, fan, he loves phantom sours. Mm. So we got the, uh, I can't remember what it was, but it was green. It was like the mermaid sour, I think it was. And um, <laughs> had that on tap. Lovely. As soon as they got back, one person ordered that and just had this bright green drink. And within 20 minutes, every single person and everyone at wow. the reception had this green drink. Nobody knew what the hell it was, but everyone was just like, I'm on the green one, I'm on the green one, I'm on the green one. And everyone was just had completely different reactions to this beer. But everyone almost had another one. Yeah. Just because it was, yeah, just the, the theatre of it, the experience of it was... That's amazing. It's kind of like social media, but within a yeah, room, isn't yeah. it, space. I think that, and everything you've talked about, it's all about discovery, isn't it? So it's yeah, coming like, in and trying things they might not have tried of, before. There's a 19-year-old drinking one, there's a yeah. 75-year-old sitting in the corner. Yeah. Knocking back a eight percent green sour, crack on. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's happy there. Yeah. yeah. We talked about what you like most about the role and like the different hats that you wear. Um, what do you think people might be surprised to know about owning a bottle shop and coffee shop? I guess. I guess probably the cost of everything is more, mm. probably something I wasn't actually that sure of either. Yeah, especially like I suppose now as well, they've got a rising cost of everything. But yeah, during like last year when the all the electric and all of that was just insane. So I think yeah, obviously 
in being craft beer, the margins are so kind of small because you don't want to charge a lot. Whereas you look at a pubs, you know, selling a pint for X amount, we're kind of similar price for say two thirds, mm -hmm. probably lower, still less. Yeah. Equivalently, probably like a quid more or something. But actually, like the, <laughs> the markup in a pub is probably three, four times what it is here. So I guess that's that's the kind of thing I think when people come in that don't know craft beer, they kind of look at the price of something and they're like, oh, that's really expensive. Mm. Like, yeah, but like the amount of ingredients, I guess like breweries will probably say the same thing. Obviously, it's like, you know, it's only X amount of ingredients in what you're drinking in a Green King pub to what you're drinking in a tap room of like yeah. how that beer is made. So I think that's probably something that naturally isn't understood by people that, you know, aren't that involved, I guess. But I think everything else, thankfully, everyone's pretty because we kind of know everyone by name, you know. Well, to be fair, I probably know dogs' names more than people because my memory's terrible. Uh, yeah, I think everyone's quite, kind of knows that we've got a family, so they know if they don't see Em for a while, it's probably because she's got the kids, or if they don't see me for a while, probably because I've got the kids or, or yeah. something, and and they'll know if the kids are in because they'll hear them because they'll be running a mock somewhere. <laughs> but no, other than that, I think everyone's quite, yeah, quite relaxed with how we are hopefully as owners and appreciate the fact that we've got two kids and we're always in and out and juggling yeah so yeah apart from that and what would you say to someone listening who might be considering uh, setting up a, a shop like you have yeah um probably the same thing that a similar person said to me who had their own independent bar just stop worrying about it stop talking about it and do it although that was three years ago. So it's a bit of change now in terms of it being more expensive to do everything. But essentially, I guess in some ways, you've just got to take a bit of a punt. I mean, this was a, a bit of a daydream, potentially was going to work. If it didn't work, it would have been a massive catastrophe. But at the end of the day, you just got to go for it. Yeah, I had the idea for quite a few years. I could have talked myself out of it at every opportunity. Mm. Almost did several times. And you, yeah, I suppose, especially with the craft beer scene, you're like, is this the right location? Are there people that like craft beer here? But as I said to like quite a few of my friends that were like, yeah, but the, the pubs are full or the pubs aren't full. It's like, yeah, but that, that's not your, that's not your audience. Mm. Your audience are people that aren't in the pub because they don't go to the pub. And like, same like, yeah, but yeah, there's a Costa. Yeah, it's not your, your audience isn't Costa. Your, your audience is people that like independent, good craft coffee, beer, whatever it is, that's, so you're kind of basing it on that, of like, yeah, if, if there's loads of pubs that sell the same thing, they can be full, but actually, there's still so many people at home that are wanting someone like you to open. Yeah, totally. I guess that's something you've done as well, isn't it? You've um, obviously worked with local and national, you know, independent uh, breweries and things like that, but also, you know, things like cakes, pastries, uh, your coffee you mentioned that's all local as well and local providers you're working with and supporting yeah I mean our, we've, we had an ethos from the start that we didn't want anything mass produced so even like to a point of we won't, won't do like coke or diet coke mm. just because kind of goes against everything so we've got a smoked cola oh nice <laughs> so when people come in well it pairs perfectly with spice rum <laughs> that was its flavour profile right yeah that's good yeah that's good and um, you've got a few rums here as well haven't you yeah again you know sell what you know <laughs> people ask why we don't do whiskey it's like I don't know anything I, yeah, it's like, enough, I, yeah I can't sell it if I don't know it I confidently know about rum so I can sell yeah. it yeah I know that's really good yeah and again it's independent brilliant um, but yeah stuff, stuff like that it's like everything we want so lo local bakers small as we can get them so you've got one lady who does our brownies for example you know independent baker in Basingstoke who does all our pastries yeah coffee guy in Reading and then as soon as we hear if any customer says about a new brewery or have you tried this brewery mm. and it's like a one-man band or like a nano brewery somewhere like yes straight on it love it so yeah that, that's that, that's like probably the funnest bit for me it's like when we've yeah like pipeline met Johnny through Phantom yeah. and just chatted to him it's just like him yeah. down in Cornwall it's yeah. like that is exactly yeah. what we wanted like you're never going to try his beer on tap around here anywhere unless I get it in and we did get it in and it's outrageously good and it's like that is sort of a testament to what we're about yeah perfect it's really good and you couldn't do that really if you're a larger coffee shop in the same way um, it might get lost I guess and, and you know yeah. if you're a, or a chain but you can bring that in and kind of focus on it's, you know, yeah I think that. it's 
no matter how successful this is or if you got the thought of opening another one stresses me out but you know, <laughs> no matter how big you got it's like you can never lose that original list that you wrote and that original concept of we're not going to sell this just because it's cheaper we're not going to sell this because it's cheaper so many cost cutting things you can do when the price of electric went up through the roof for like mm. quadrupled it's like alright do we cut costs on anything else it's like no because then you can't go back as soon as you make that decision you're done yeah so yeah it's like never never have core beers kind of thing like never have a permanent tap of a line it's just like things that we kind of said to ourselves when we opened that's what we wanted and I think you just gotta, gotta stick to that really mm-hmm. I hope you're enjoying our chat and if you like what you're hearing there are a few things that you can do that really help us out and help other people find the podcast Number one, follow or subscribe to We Are Beer People podcast wherever you get your podcasts and leave a review or rating. Number two, share the episode on your socials or even in actual real life. And if you want to stay up to date with all things We Are Beer People, you can visit our website, wearebeerpeople.co.uk, where you can sign up for a monthly newsletter and you can follow us on social media at We Are Beer People. And if you have any questions or comments or want to hear from any beer people, then pop me a message. Now... Back to the podcast. You talked about doing things like collaborations as well with breweries and going out with them to create yeah. brews with them and the hive. Is that a part of the role that you really enjoy? Brewing yeah, together? it wasn't anything that I thought would happen, to be honest. You know, totally wet behind the ears when you first open a door and pull a beer and you're like, <laughs> and then, so the Phantom were elusive. Um, said, oh, do you want to brew a beer? I was like, bloody love thing, yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, Why wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, I think at Phantom we did a little... 150 litre pilot brew mm. which is just on on keg funny enough that's called pipe dreams which was which, which was fitting that was really good so yeah we've obviously put the hot profile uh, yeah what we wanted to taste what we were dry helping it with yeah um and then we've done a couple with elusive who have been super supportive of us kicking in with their obviously retro gaming thing so we did it based on alex kid Love and it. then yeah i've done a few more with phantom Coupled with disruption on my beloved John Carpenter films, a part of my nice, yeah. 10 beer series. Yeah, and then we, we, we've brewed a few beers for like the climbing centre that I climb at. So we've done an mm-hmm. Oakwood beer because we, we run a bar there. Um, Elusive have helped us do some for like local schools yeah. to make some beers for them. So yeah, that's like an extra bonus of I never had planned of like combining different passions I've got for that's really nice yeah. <laughs> yeah. other other nerds might enjoy yeah well you've done that because you did uh, obviously collabs with Mysterious and Tap Takeovers with you know them and you're talking about other Tap Takeovers as well that you've got coming up yeah the Takeovers were obviously we really wanted to do that with like Elusive and we've done them with Phantom and like our local guys as well mm. so like and Mysterious as soon as they started it was like definitely do a Takeover and they brought a great crowd down and just really like yeah focuses like on, on the local scene as well but then also to have the opportunity to do you know a Polly's takeover or a Rivington takeover yeah it's like why why wouldn't you yeah absolutely <laughs> um, what's not to like yeah exactly point, yeah we kind of go sometimes go a bit overboard and get some like design work done and and stuff just because the nerd in me can't help it yeah but yeah we've got a Rivington takeover booked for leap year day because what a better way to spend an extra day of the year. Nice, yeah. I forgot it's uh, this year, isn't it? Have there been any people on your sort of journey into the world of beer that have been particularly instrumental in um, you sort of learning the ropes as you go, you know, or finding out how to do things, that kind of thing? Yeah, definitely. Well, from the off, I was obviously drinking a lot in tap rooms, so initially I was kind of chewed the year off. Mm. <laughs> as many <laughs> everyone as possible. Yeah, pretty much yeah. everyone. Yeah, speaking to Andy originally elusive as everyone probably says in a podcast of like Andy's helped me somewhere along the way yeah I think I need to start up a bingo for when uh, yeah. Andy Parker gets mentioned or nicest man in beer yeah. but he, he does very well I'm thinking yeah he well he, he came to see the shop mm. when it was a well it wasn't anything it was just a white box and I went yeah, just to get his advice on like the cold room and the, the beer dispensing which was invaluable mm. I, it's just something I didn't know at the time um and yeah, Mike and Lucy at Double Barreled. Yeah, there's like the, the sort of in original kind of people. And then ever since we opened, really. So, you know, John over at Disruption, Dane and Phantom, 
Ken at Mysterious now. Now he's started brewing, amazing. Yeah, it's so many people that kind of you just naturally become part of your community. Yeah. Because obviously you hear it's a really nice, the beer scene's really nice anyway and accommodating, but as soon as you start actually a business and you start buying from people, yeah, it is kind of all true. It's not just the drinking, not, not just the drinkers that are kind of nice and craft beer. Actually, everyone involved in the industry has been yeah really good that's really nice yeah because that's got to be something that feels good and I think going back to your first point that December three years ago when you opened and you took your sort of week's predictions in a day that must have felt good as well yeah it's I mean even now it's like completely I mean this is surreal in itself mm. like doing a podcast on a beer shop that we've opened a very very small podcast (laughs) (laughs) even so this is just it was just to put you in a pair of headphones really that's the main reason for this (laughs) but yeah it's very good even when customers you know when customers praise you on like a Friday or Saturday night and someone says oh it's really cool like thanks for like opening it's just like yeah it kind of like tricks you up a bit and you're like like it's actually yeah you kind of think this is exactly how you want it to be and when we opened it was covid so Mm. we opened for two and a half weeks and then that was with uh, what was it the old pork pie substantial meals oh malarkey yeah you could only have a drink if you yeah so we were you know well we were we were selling cheese boards like they were going out of fashion yeah um and then we had to shut completely for after two and a half weeks but silver lining it actually worked perfectly that we were a bottle shop so we could still open as a bottle shop and do takeaway coffee so yeah luckily it kind of <laughs> there was so much I'd forgotten to do or hadn't done it gave you a bit of breathing space yeah I think to be honest if we hadn't had that third lockdown we, we would have struggled because I like, really should have done that really should have done that yeah so it's really weird how that well that whole time period was weird but uh, just how that affected everyone you know differently and yeah and that was one of the, god I remember the first lockdown I spent weeks walking the streets of Crowthorn drawing a a physical map that I had to send to the highways patrol just to get a license because they refused to believe there was a car park so I had to count every space for like five miles wow (laughs) (laughs) then I think the first day we got the key was the first lockdown no the second lockdown and the day we opened that second lockdown ended so that four weeks was just build yeah and thankfully the builders merchants were open otherwise we but <laughs> everyone else was building then weren't they doing their sort of garden projects and dating yeah. and stuff like that so you're yeah. sort of trying to get the stuff you need probably yeah thankfully I still had some contacts so it was quite good <laughs> <laughs> yeah to find a way yeah that, that was, that was that the timber. good bit yeah. But so sort of as we're sort of sat here today it's January it's cold outside um, very it's cold notorious time as well for being quite hard in hospitality and in beer I was wondering if you, you know, could share sort of how you're finding things at the moment and any kind of you know approaches you're taking to sort of help encourage people to, to come out if they want to do so. Um, yeah, I think kind of basing it on last last year's January was actually for us was really good mm. and it was because that was our I suppose it was our first proper January because the other one was still kind of pandemic laced, mm. <laughs> sprinkled. Yeah, yeah, a little dusting yeah. pandemic in there. It was actually really good. I was surprised how many people were drinking. Almost to a point when I was questioning them. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's surprising, actually. I think people still want to get out. Because from personal like kind of perspective, um, January and February are pretty bleak. Mm. <laughs> the, the weather itself the bleakest. is bleakest. Like, I think after you've got, lost yeah, the uh, I mean, anticipation and excitement of Christmas. Yeah, the thought of not drinking in January is mm. like, that's tough. I'm like, <laughs> no, I do a couple of days, but yeah, you need something, I think. Yeah, I think um, moderation of moderation. Yeah, yeah, but generally I think people are really good. We've put a, a, a 0.5 on the taps and it's actually not really going at all. Everyone's still kind of <laughs> drinking <laughs> as usual, I think. But uh, yeah, I think the colder it gets, the more people are like, yeah, I feel bloody hell, I need a drink. Yeah, exactly. It's the only way to warm up nowadays. It's uh, cheaper than the electricity anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now on to the exciting beer questions. If you had to pick a favourite beer, uh, what would it be and why? Oh, that is a good question. Mm, I think um, New England's definitely my style and my my go-to. Um, I guess if I could drink something... Oh, damn, that is a tough question. I think my, my nostalgic beer, which doesn't exist anymore in the same guise, is uh, an ice-cold... 
straight from the brewery fridge with a bottled sound wave back in the day when that was still small small batch like that was like my nostalgic beer that's what that's what turned me I think I spent a good few years just sitting back on there mulling ideas over and yeah coming up with having the dreams I think that's probably my nostalgic beer but yeah I don't know there's too many now to just have one one beer I'm well you've like, got 350 out yeah. there haven't you <laughs> there's yeah. a few to choose I mean, that, but that's the beauty of it isn't it it's like yeah. you, you can't pick one but I think my, my I'd say my my perfect beer would be probably like a 5.6 Nelson and Maraca hop New England beautiful lovely I'm guessing is it is your favourite beer style then New England IPA yes. these days yeah it's never really changed too much but then you know you can you've got to smatter that in with everything else so last night I was drinking a nice session chocolate stout which just yeah that just hit the spot and like Sunday you know West Coast is really gonna yeah gonna do it I'm still not I, I love a, I love the idea of a sour and I love the first sip of a sour but I can't quite drink two thirds of a sour just the it's the sour for me but my wife M, M absolutely loves them so I always have a bit of hers so I can talk about it yeah. and recommend it and appreciate it but you don't have to finish the glass don't have to finish the glass no <laughs> that's all right. and how about your favourite place to enjoy a beer I suppose it comes down to the nostalgia doesn't it really um there's something about double barrelled tap room that again the first few times I've been there that was it's always such a welcoming place I think that's that's definitely in there um, there's actually a, uh, in Menorca a, a tap room called Biro O'Clock can you translate that for us? Biro <laughs> <laughs> like, um, weirdly I went we went there we went there um, just before lockdown and we hadn't opened mm. And uh, I was chatting to the guy, and he was again he independent. It's just him, had two taps, load of bottles, all the crazy Spanish breweries, and yeah, in, in this right in the town. Can't tell you exactly where. Um, yeah, beautiful weather, really interesting beers on tap. And he just had a baby, a tiny little baby that we met, and we went back three years later, and went back to the same place. Spoke to him. And it was like yeah. his little kid was running around. Oh. My two were running around. He now had six taps on. We owned the hive. He had loads more beers. And yeah, it was just like a really awesome moment of like, God, I like, remember that little baby being that big and like having you and he had this many beers. And yeah, it's just a perfect so nice, yeah. moment. And the weather was thousands of miles away. Um, yeah, but still yeah, yeah. Nice to cross paths again in that way. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. So I. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably go with that. Um, you talked about dogs as well earlier. Um, <laughs> how important are dogs to the kind of ingredients that you need for... Um, one, two, three, four. They were fourth on the list. Fourth? Yeah. It was beer, coffee, cheese, dogs. My mum's a dog sitter, so I've always got, there's always been dogs everywhere. Mm. And uh, knowing how many people have dogs, and pursuing it like a... When you're drinking in tap rooms, people take their dogs because you're mainly standing outside. So it was, it was always a, a no-brainer of like definitely be dog friendly. And I think it just it adds a different dimension to the community aspect of it, just because dog owners speak to each other and people that don't have dogs still speak to the dogs, and then you end up speaking to the owner. So yeah, often the dog first, though, isn't it? You say hello yeah, to the dog. I mean, and then, oh, I'm I'm massively good when people come in. I'm like hugging hugging their dog. And I'm like, oh, sorry, <laughs> how are you this morning? You all right? Just follow the lead up. <laughs> yeah. The end, yeah, but oh, people do literally yeah. their dogs drag them in here. Yeah. So, but we've had cats. We've had two have cats. You? Yeah, we've got a mancoon that comes in called Hagrid. Wow, he's bigger than most of the dogs. No. How do you transport a mancoon cat? Have you seen a mancoon cat? They're massive, aren't they? Yeah, massive. yeah. Are, they on, are they on a lead? Are they being carried? No, he's he's generally being carried like over the shoulder. Yeah, you see, he's hench. He's a big, big old boy. And the other one comes in an extendable rucksack bag. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. and they, they have a good time out as well. <laughs> yeah, it's quite surreal. I think that's maybe the only other animal. We did have a pigeon in, but it doesn't count. He didn't come with anyone. <laughs> he, was, he was rogue. Yeah, he was just trying his, <laughs> yeah. trying his uh, luck on that one. <laughs> See, the hive being all about community, 
I think I've noticed that you have like running club, you have quiz nights, you have gaming nights and that kind of thing. How have those all sort of been started and um, how are they going? Yeah, really. I mean, the the running club's a bit of a freak. It's like taking an its own, it's got its own social page now. <laughs> so my wife Emma started that yeah. just because she really loves running, wanted someone to sort of run with and there's a, I think it's a left-handed giant, I think, have got a run club which she was following, which she was really impressed with and she wanted to start something similar here I think in all honesty she probably only thought it'd be like a couple of people I think now we sort of have a thing about 20 people a week on like a Thursday Thursday morning 20 mm-hmm. people rain or shine I always see the group shots afterwards as well. yeah it's really really good they've all got their own like tops on uh, yeah it's just taking on a thing and they all do like some of them do like marathons together so we've got like obviously the phantom run um, we're lucky enough Adam who works for us is a uh, elite runner so he wins a lot of them he's our like yeah he's our little ace in the ace in the deck uh, yeah that's come along really well and then obviously the quiz we, we started up which is really good it always stresses me out trying to find time to write it and not get questions wrong yeah <laughs> which inevitably every week I do yeah. so apologies for that <laughs> uh, yeah like game nights we just we, we've, we've got a charity shop next door to us so I can go in and get the most obscure board games you could possibly think of and uh, see how they give them a little road test first and check they, they work they go in the pile yeah. yeah there's nothing worse than going in somewhere and you pick something out and it's half missing everything so that's it I did promise somebody three drink, free drinks for life if they could complete a baked bean puzzle Ooh. it was called the impossible puzzle and it was literally just baked beans oh my god and you you haven't seen him since well thank you I haven't been giving him free beers yeah. <laughs> no he's holed himself up in the beer den which is the back room we've got oh yeah and uh he didn't hear from him for four hours and he was there plugging away when he checked I started getting worried I was like oh, is he actually going to do it no he needn't done the edges <laughs> <laughs> then about four people turned up and his mates had come to join him he texted them all yeah. he's like look lads we'll get free beer they all turned up uh, three hours later nah nowhere near amazing but I threw the I've thrown the puzzle away just in case yeah <laughs> <laughs> otherwise you'll be bankrupt yeah. by everyone coming like, in why, and why, why did we demise it was beans yeah <laughs> What have you got coming up that you're excited about? Uh, I think, well, this this month and next month, we've got State of Kind. We've got their three beers for Christmas coming out, which will be dropping next week, I think, which is, all, which is good. Nice. Collabs with, like, Rivington, Mackie Mackie and Drop Project. So looking forward to that. So I haven't had much from them, actually, so kind of looking forward to that. Rivington Takeover next month. Oh, got Andy's... Um, Double Oregon releases. Oh, yeah, I saw that being teased on the socials. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sunset Double Oregon. Oh, it's, it's like some, one of those styles, like the red IPA. Just you kind of creeps up on you, I think. If you're just like, no, I really do like a red IPA. Yeah. Like, why do they not brew more of them? No, I'm always saying, anytime I ever see a red IPA, hmm. red ale, or anything like that, I always have it. I might not have loads of them, but I'll always have, that as my first beer if I see red yeah, yeah. something on that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I get it, just in case it runs out. Yeah. I'm like, that. I'm, yeah, <laughs> just that fear of a FOMO of like missing out. I'm like, no, I need to drink it now. Quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Off on a tangent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then, we, yeah, we've got a few more um, beer collabs sort of coming up, so we're rebrewing my they live inspired beer with disruption so a second one of those first one was consume and this one's going to be submit so more like retro geekiness excellent and yeah another climbing beer for oakwood then i think on from there i can't even remember now probably a halloween inspired beer another john carpenter one love it um yeah it's loads of tap takeovers yeah, kind of looking to do some outward, maybe some other stuff outside of the hive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, where can people keep up to date with everything, the hive? Uh, so Instagram, we're at the hive pro form. Um, obviously, website, Facebook, just search us, I guess. Uh, the Run Club's got its own social media, which is the Hive Run Club, I believe. I think there's a dogs of the hive as well, probably. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and then we're on, obviously we're on Untapped, so you can follow us there. And then I tend to be about 97% accurate on all the bottle shop and Untap. Excellent. Yeah, no <laughs> mean feat there. As much as I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, but probably the best way, yeah. Probably the best, best ways. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Alex, for joining us today. No worries. Thank you. It was really lovely chatting with Alex and what Emma, Alex and the team at The Hive have created 
is a truly welcoming place with all the ingredients to keep a happy hive of people and pets coming back again and again. So thank you very much for listening and I hope you can join me on the next one. And this is the part where I ask for your help. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the podcast, leave a review or rating or share it with others. This really helps us out and helps other people find the podcast, particularly as we're starting out. And you can follow us on social media, search for We Are Beer People, all one word. You can also email us at wearebeerpeoplepod at gmail.com. Let us know what you think, share your thoughts, and if you have any recommendations for beer people you'd like to hear from. And until next time, don't forget, you, me, us, them, we are all beer people. 